No one knew what to do. And uh, shortly afterwards, in October, uh, there were uh, advertisements across the TV screens asking for volunteers, and nurses were specifically asked for. And I felt that this is something that I wanted to do. So I called the number for the American Red Cross, and they, uh, they told me to come in right away. They told me I needed to take a first aid course, and I said, I, I think I can pass it. Can you just give me the test? Because uh, I, I think, because I wanted to get up to New York, and they said, sure. So they gave me the test, and I passed. And um, they swore me in to become a member of American Red Cross. And I went home and packed my bags, and the next next morning they put me on a train for New York City. Ground Zero itself, I did go to Ground Zero, and it was, there were still fires burning constantly. Uh, the firemen were there putting out small fires. And what I do remember the most was the smell. The smell was putrid. There were nurses there at Ground Zero. The nurses there were giving the firemen uh, what they called breathing treatments nebulizer treatments. Um, I wanted to help the families of the victims and it was, uh, I felt like I couldn't do enough and um, that I just couldn't do enough and I felt of course very sad not only for them but for our, our whole country. I mean this was this was a horrible thing that happened and um, and I was afraid, a little afraid um, that something more was going to happen there was just rubble and there was holes in the ground and rubble and fires burning and ashes and a, this horrible smell and people were walking around putting flowers and cards sticking them in the, the area was fenced off uh, as best they could fence it off um, because it was an extensive area and uh, so there were a lot of people, uh, no matter what time of day that you went by, people were there crying and um, putting, up fl putting in flowers and cards, that sort of thing, praying. I would get back to the hotel around 9 o'clock. Uh, sometimes we would linger a little bit, to myself and the people I was working with, and we would linger a little bit to talk about the day and reflect on the day. But as soon as I got back to the hotel, I would, I'd call my children and I'd talk to them about their day. I'm glad that, I'm so glad that I was there. I'm so glad that I'm a nurse and that I was able to help. Because nursing, the essence of nursing is caring and compassion. And nurses serve people every day and provide caring and compassion. And this was just one more way that I could do that, and so I'm I'm very glad that I went. Um, as up as uh, sad as it was, um, I'm glad that I went. They did. Um, the Red Cross gave us a vest and a, of course a name tag, and we were told to wear that at all times, uh, because a lot of the volunteers would travel on the subways to uh, go see victims and, and the families. Uh, so we were to wear our vest at all times. And because people weren't supposed to be out on the streets, so if you were walking back to your hotel and got stopped, you were wearing this vest that identified you and your name tag. And before we left, they had a pinning ceremony. Um, it was a very quiet pinning ceremony, but we got pinned and told that we were told that our pins actually would, whenever we die, <laughs> it sounds a little morbid, but whenever we die, our pins uh, could be returned to the Smithsonian, that there was a place in the Smithsonian uh, Museum for our pins.
those over 400 first responders. 343 firemen, 60 police officers, and two paramedics died that day. Many more would follow. As we identified those who did this to us, as we sent our troops to deal with those that hurt us, I, I tip my hat. We in law enforcement, we have to get shot at occasionally. Soldiers, sailors, airmen, that's what, they, that's, that's what happened. We lost thousands in the war. And I appreciate, respect, and, and I'm at awe of what our military can do. My hat's off. My hair's already gone. Oh. Oh. Oh.